Noel, and I'm co-founder of Samara's Healthcare Recruitment Limited. We're an agency. The client comes to us and says, find me a candidate. I've, a lot of my staff are from um, Africa. It's got to a stage now that some people are using the same formula. So we know if it, you need to make us feel like we're the only ones that you care about and we're the only ones that you're applying for. When you say something, make sure it's backed up. Don't go for the supporting living jobs or the easy jobs. You need to go for the harder jobs, go for the basics because not, that's not needed. But the other three are needed. So change your technique. If you change your technique, you've got a higher chance. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tochi. If you're seeing me for the first time, you're very much welcome. To all my returning subscribers, thank you guys so much. So guys, yes, I've seen all your questions and I decided to, you know, go on to get a recruiter to come on here and answer all the questions you have about the healthcare assistant jobs in the UK. So let's just get right into it. I'll let her introduce herself so we don't take so much time. Thank you, Toshi. Hi, guys. Thank you for being on Toshi's channel and thank you for watching this um, this YouTube video today. So I'm hoping it's going to be very informal to you guys. My name is Sophia. I'm from Harsh and Sophia YouTube channel and I'm co-founder of Samara's Healthcare Recruitment Limited been in the industry since I was 16, born and bred in England, uh, moved up to Scotland and we've got a business in recruitment training. So hopefully I could answer as many questions as Tochi throws at me in the time we've got. All right, you're welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you for agreeing to do this for it's us. Okay. We are grateful. So I just asked questions. I told you guys to ask some questions and on my Instagram, on my Telegram community, just to ask her because the time was very short and i got some of your questions and today she's here to answer all your questions she's a recruiter right she recruits healthcare assistants in the uk so i'm just here to ask her all your questions so guys sit back relax and enjoy so let's just get right into it all right sophia before we continue what is the job market like for healthcare assistants in the uk like so somebody who is trying to get the job right now and it's probably losing hope or is feeling like i've tried to apply and no show there's no response no positive feedback and the person is probably trying to give up you know what is the person's fate at the moment do you think there are still available opportunities do you think recruiters are still going to recruit healthcare assistants or do you think the gate is going to close very soon like what do you have to say right now that is the opportunities available for those looking to work as healthcare assistants in the uk First of all, I would like to say, everybody, if you've got a dream to come to the UK as a healthcare assistant, don't ever give up on your dreams. Even if you like keep on trying until the end, you will get it one day if you do the right things. Like, you need to follow the right restrictions and guidelines for it and you will get somewhere and it has worked. That's the formula. Now, anybody that's in health and social care has got a better chance than someone that's not in it and just wants to come over because of the new care worker visa route. Health and social care in the UK is massive in the fact that it is needed, it's very desperately needed. Now, six months ago, if I put out a job advert on my social media page or Indeed, only a couple of people used to apply and it was not as fast demanding. Since the 15th of February, I put out an application within one day and I get hundreds of emails, hundreds of emails for health and social care. Um, but not just that, our clients actually need them. This is why we are securing contracts quicker than we ever imagined. Harsha is securing contracts and we are getting them more for internal people, but we have actually secured a um, cash as well because we knew where the market needed the overseas applicants. So we approached them with the right formula and technique and it did pay off after many times. So it is a big industry to come into for the UK and it will be for a, for a very long time. Wow. So guys, you guys have heard from the horse's mouth don't give up keep applying as you can see the gate is still very much open just get all the experience meet all the requirements and be sure that once you apply you get the job because healthcare assistants are in demand in the uk so thank you very much sophia and secondly what what do you think recruiters are looking out for when it comes to um interviews so when someone is preparing for an interview as a healthcare assistant in the uk what should the person have in mind yeah. Um, going back to the other question, don't go for the supporting living jobs or the easy jobs. You need to go for the harder jobs. Living carer job, 
domiciliary care worker if you're driving and nursing jobs don't go for the basics because it's not that's not needed but the other three are needed so change your technique if you change your technique you've got a higher chance um what are recruiters looking for um we are looking for we see hundreds of applications a day it's got to a stage now that some people are using the same formula so we know if it you need to make us feel like we're the only ones that you care about and we're the only ones that you're applying for. When you say something, make sure it's backed up. For example, if you said, I looked at your website and I'm applying for a senior care worker route and I've looked at it and I know I haven't put a senior care worker job out. I know you just done a copy and paste job. So that we won't acknowledge you because we think that you are not catering for us. So you need to cater each job specifically for that job. Look at the job description and the job specification. If you meet the mandatory requirements, and if you're lucky, the essential requirements or complementary ones, more than likely you will get a job. If you are ticking all the boxes, there's no reason why you shouldn't get a job um, or an interview, shall I say. Um, we don't like lies, um, lies on applications. So if there's gaps and you are filling them in saying that you've looked after someone when you haven't, because you're all using the same excuses at the moment and we can see it, don't lie about it because we will scrutinize you especially if you're coming from overseas because we can cross cross reference that's our job to do so be honest if you haven't got the experience in it from overseas don't don't apply for it unless you got the experience if you're from the uk and you haven't got experience that's okay people like us do give chances oh thank you very much i'm sure someone is encouraged already <laughs> hopefully <laughs> thank you how long does it take to for the process to be completed from when someone applies for the job till the interview stage and then to COS because okay. I've heard people say that they've applied for job they've even gotten the job but the COS is taking time so why does you know COS actually why is it taking time for someone to get their COS it's not actually the COS that's taking the time it's the license for the employer that's taking the time this is a new route guys so the license takes months because they have to meet a legal requirement they have to have a high HR team they have to have a legal team they need to ensure that they complete and uh, the company meets an a, a license without an a license they can't give you a cash for it when you get the job approved if they haven't got this license they have to apply for that now there's lots of stuff going on in the uk we got brexit we had we got the ukrainian thing going on there's other stuff that is delaying the process for the home office to see they got priority services that have to put on hold lots of stuff so it is delaying the process but if our company has already got the license they've already fast-tracked a bit of it they would ask for a certain amount of licenses certificate of sponsorship from the uk vi so they might say i need 12 all they need to do is an electronic document so that should technically take one working day but it's taking a bit longer but if they have got no license it's going to take months applying for jobs because you're not the only one applying it is taking months even us guys now we are working i'm working 20 hours a day which is um, we're having lack of sleep because we are going through applications after application we have got competency tests getting a job from overseas here it's not an easy thing they're going to put you through everything because they don't want you to come here and leave that job because you can change employers so they are going to scrutinize you so the process is longer than usual even though it says three weeks so don't rely on what the government website says as long, until you get that visa in your hand and the certificate of sponsorship electronic document you keep on trying so on the average how long are we looking at from let's just from the application process to you know the cos getting your cos and even coming to the uk like how long are we looking at it's very hard to say because each one is different like if you haven't got this the right fees to show or if you haven't got something on your side like your visa fees or your passport or anything like that it would take longer a smooth sailing it says three weeks but realistically i'm seeing about four to five months at the moment um and that's not even with any any issues but there are going to be people that said no i've got it faster it depends on the company how good their legal team is and how fast the home office is working on it and um, there's just really inundated i'm seeing a lot of processes being delayed yeah someone is asking if mvq diploma in healthcare is actually needed to get this job um you do need a form of qualification i know the website says a level or equivalent but realistically if there's tens of thousands of people applying and somebody's got a degree in health and social care and you've got nothing the more than likely if not guaranteed the person with the qualification is going to get a look in not the person without it you don't actually need an mvq it's better to have a degree or anything like that you can convert it to naric if you've got a uk mvq brilliant because a lot of people have come here studied and gone back 
is great, but um, it's better to have a degree to meet the criteria and a higher or a diploma. I know it sounds too advanced, but that will be the best thing. But always apply with an MVQ if you have. Yeah, and someone is asking if somebody gets a job offer from an employer, but there's no COS. Can, should the person continue applying to other jobs or should the person just wait for the COS to be issued? All right. Never put your eggs in one basket, guys. The employer doesn't care about you in that respect, so you need to look after yourself. If you've been approved a job and you, they said they're going to give you a um, certificate of sponsorship, you carry on looking. Until you get the certificate of sponsorship in your hand and that visa and the flight ticket booked, you carry on looking, right? Because otherwise you're going to sit there, you're going to, you're going to stress yourself out you're going to keep ringing that company and stressing them out and they're going to pull it because they don't want someone to be begging them so you carry on looking and have that in your mind that okay i've got that let me carry on looking because there might be other opportunities when i used to apply for jobs i used to apply for hundreds i used to get approved for a lot but until i had that confirmation letter and if i was doing it abroad until i know the visa is guaranteed that's the most important thing that's when you need yeah. to go for you need to remember there's two things you need the certificate of sponsorship and the visa the visa is the most important because you may have the certificate of sponsorship but the visa might decline because they never met the criteria so you need to ensure that you keep on trying for other jobs other things until you do it because if they pull that which i've seen many people say that it's been pulled because there are a lot of compliance in the uk just keep on doing it yeah so someone is asking if one is allowed to ask the employer if they can seek the maintenance fund parts so that they don't have to show proof of funds okay is he allowed to ask an employer to do that for you you can ask if they are willing to pay it or tick the box and if they said yes that's fine but they need to legally show that if you can't fund it but don't ask them to tick it and lie about it because they're not going to do that and that's fraud don't ask them to do anything fraudulently um, more than likely you should have the money here because I'm telling you guys and Toshi can be my backup coming to the UK with no money you're not going to survive you cannot get public funds you are not going to survive in the UK especially with the gas prices the fuel prices accommodation going up so more than likely a company is not going to give you any looking if you can't fund yourself unless they are happy but you don't understand the cost of a employer recruiting overseas is costing them thousands of pounds to give them another cost on top of that um they might not take you because they've got thousands of people applying so they'd rather go for someone that can fund themselves for what they need because they've got to by law fund themselves for other things so you can ask and negotiate it if you're that good and if they're happy to do it have it in writing that they're happy to do it but realistically, you're not going to survive on that because you will not get paid until at least a month from your start date. Next person is asking if employers take people from the red list countries. You know what? I'm not going to lie. I don't know much about this red list country. It's like when we give jobs, I don't say, oh, you." I don't look down a list and think, oh, you're from a red list country. You can't come because you might be off the red list country. I've never had an employer ask me and I don't know much about it. So, you know what? Just keep on applying. You know what? Because... If, you, if they say yes, that's fine. If they say no, because the actual recruitment process is taking months anyway. So you might be in the red list country now, but, but by the time you get approved and come through, it'd be okay. I've, a lot of my staff are from um, Africa and I asked them about this red list country and they go, it's a bit exaggerated. I know a lot of companies are saying no red list, but I don't know nothing about it. None of my clients have ever mentioned it and we don't really look at that. So I'll just keep on applying for it. Um, if, if you think that you're gonna, you've got a chance, a real chance, look at the job, not the fact that you're from a certain country, look at the job to see if you can actually do it and get that, get that approval. You guys have heard it. Don't bother whether you're from a red list country or not, just keep applying and make sure you meet the requirements. And once you meet the requirements, employers will definitely employ you, whether you're from a red list country or not. Um, Thank you so much, Sophia. I'm doing like a certificate of sponsorship now, which you've kindly posted on your thing. When I got their deadlines on Sunday, I'm not going to be looking at, I've got 2,000 applicants sitting there that done it compliantly. I'm not going to be like, oh, this person's from a red, I'm not going to look at a, a list. I'm going to look yeah. at the criteria and then I'm going to interview them. I'm not going to keep looking at, oh, they're on the red list. I can't put them through. So it's, it's irrelevant to me. If you're on the red list when you get the job, we'll see what the law of the UK is then. Like, don't worry about it now. Just like, you know, you're not stressing too much about something that's, to me, is irrelevant. Yeah. Thank you. That's what I think too. I feel yeah. like everybody bothering themselves so much about the red list thing. Why do that? Just apply. It's too hyped up. It's too hyped up. Yeah. I don't know what they're talking about. I have no idea. 
<laughs> uh, that's a British recruiter telling you. Other p- people might know about it, but I have not had no issues with it. It doesn't bother us. So someone is asking if it's legal for some recruiters to ask people to pay for, you know, um, accommodation fee, visa fee, and some other fees. They ask them to pay before they give them COS. They're asking if it's actually legal. No, you know what? This is my, I hate this because this is what gives recruiters a bad name. You do not pay for a job, Eva. Do not pay for a job because if you are paying for a job and they are regulated to UK, you can report them. I hate that because people even say to me, you're going to charge us for the job. I'm like, no, the employer pays for it. How it works, this is an agency. We're an agency. The client comes to us and says, find me a candidate. We go and find them a candidate. The client pays us to find that candidate. You don't pay us. Um, However, you would pay for certain things. Um, If you're in the UK, you would pay for your PVG DBS because as, as an agency, that's on you, not on us. We would ask you to pay for training because that's your training. You will get the certificates and you can take that elsewhere because we have a high staff turnover of people because you come in, do the job and go out. So by us paying for that, isn't we're going to make a loss. So things like that you will pay for. But paying for a job, definitely never pay for a job. I know people are charging thousands of pounds apparently. I'm shocked. Now, the best thing to do, Toshi, for your um, followers and subscribers is check if they're regulated. You go on the company house website, you check the legality of the company. They would have like a sign, like under our name, we've got like REC membership. We are part of a REC group, which shows that we are compliant to recruit people. You can report us to that saying that they are charging us for a job. They will look into that. Do not pay for that stuff. However, things for yourself, like accommodation, you pay for yourself. We you know food you might pay for yourself your dependents you pay for yourself they are things that you would negotiate after you've been approved do not ask for it before because you will put a recruiter off but if they're asking you for all this money no you don't pay for it okay but there's certain things that you might pay for okay guys don't give up hope if you've got the right experience and qualifications if you can't come on the care worker visa route which is quite hard if you're a nurse a, a doctor a physiotherapist please come in your own field you've got more of a chance of coming in your own field do not downgrade it because you are overqualified. care worker visas are very hard so do not go for like i said do not go for the support worker ones the easy ones because you're not going to get a job from overseas but internally you will look at living care worker jobs look at domiciliary care if you are guaranteed that you are going to be driving in the uk look at the harder jobs because that's what they need you for not the easy ones because we can actually feel that internally good luck with everything guys i wish you all the best pop a comment below for toshi to tell you guys how you got on i would love to see what you guys um think and thank you for having me on your channel toshi i really appreciate it thank you so much for coming so okay thank you guys so much for watching and follow sophia she has a youtube channel and it's hash and sophia do well to follow her and also you guys should keep an eye because any vacancies any job advice that sophia puts out i'll definitely let you guys know so you guys can apply okay yeah so thank you guys so much for watching please remember to like this video don't forget to like it go over to sophia's channel and and show support and follow me on social media my handles are in the description box and i'll see you guys in my next video bye thank you bye